Well, it's what we've been waiting for. Yesus released new firmware and a CPS for the FTM 500. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to do a quick how-to on how to load the latest Yesu firmware into the FTM 500, as well as a look at Yesu's latest CPS, the ADMS version 16. If you find this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. Yesu recently released new firmware for the FTM 500 and its accompanying CPS. Not having a CPS was a pretty big deal for me and for others. While the FTM 500 is designed for mobile operations and thus faceplate entry of channel memories, not having a CPS to do setup functions was certainly a drawback. This latest firmware update not only adds some system improvements, it also allowed for the Yesu ADMS version 16 software to talk to the radio. For those who also have earlier Yesu Mobile or Digital HDs, the CPS also allows those users to import and export channels from those devices as well. Of course, the CPS also allows you to set various radio functions and settings along with adding channels using your computer's keyboard instead of tapping on the various buttons and knobs that are on the radio's faceplate. Since I did a video a couple of months ago about upgrading the firmware in the FTM 500 mobile transceiver, I'll go through that process fairly quickly. Feel free to refer back to the previous video for a more in-depth explanation. We'll also take a quick look at the CPS. Let's start by upgrading the firmware. So let's go through the process of updating the firmware. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, my previous video, as I said, has got a more in-depth explanation. However, uh, we'll go through the main parts, and I may edit out some of the time that the radio is loading and unloading software just to make the video shorter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and see what software the radio currently has. And to do that, we're going to press the function. And as it happens, it comes up with the software version. So I'm going to press function again. And it tells me that my main version is 1.06, sub is 1.02, and my DSP version is 7.2. The new firmware has got higher numbers than that, so I know that I'm going to have to reset. So let me back out of this. So the next step we're going to do is format our SD card. I've got the SD card in the device, and we want to format it there so that it lays out some file structure that it's expecting later on in the upgrade process. So again, we're going to press and hold the function key. It happened to come up on format, so we're going to press it again. We're going to go to OK, and we're going to format the card. And then I'll edit out some of this waiting. It's now complete, so that's good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up two steps to 107, and we're going to back up the radio onto the card. There's backup, so we're going to select backup. We're going to write to the SD card. And we're going to write all. We'll hit OK. So we'll save the information. It's complete. And so at this point, we're going to back out, take the SD card out, because we're ready to move to our computer. So at this point, we're going to go to the Yesu website, which you see displayed right here. And we're going to uh, go up to the Products tab. We're going to go to VHF and UHF mobile transceivers. We're going to go here where it says New for the FT500DR. Click on that. And then we've got that page with the information about that. We're going to go to Files. Now at the bottom of the list, it shows our software. And in this case, we have a couple of different possibilities in terms of software. So you want to make sure you download the right one. So what we're looking for now is the USA firmware, and it's dated 2312. 2312, okay? 
And then the other thing we're going to be looking for is the programming software right here. And so we're going to download both of these programs. And then we're going to download the 2312.zip right here, firmware for the USA. And so we're going to go and retrieve them right now. So now I've put the two files, zip files, that I had in folders in another folder on my radio that I keep track of my various radio firmware and documents. And so here you can see the firmware update for 2023-12, which interestingly enough is an update that's just a couple of days old. When I planned this video, it was on uh, 2023-11. So updates are coming. And in this case, the change was here in this sub SFL file. It's now version V0111 versus C0110, which it was the other day. So what I'm going to do is click here, control click, control click, and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to drop it on my FT500D folder right down here. Those are copied. And then now when I look at it, I see that these are right there under the FT500D, which is exactly what the picture showed in the installation manual. So I don't have them in any of these subfolders. So at this point, I've got the SD card back into the radio. And as the instructions call for, I'm going to press the display and the power on button at the same time uh, to enter the firmware update mode. So with those buttons firmly pushed, I've got the update mode listed and the update is illuminated. And instead of pushing this knob, the function knob, I'm going to push the main tuning knob here. So we'll press that. And you can see the radio has determined that I need to update the sub, which is 1.11, the main, which is 1.10. And I need, I don't need to update the uh, C4 DSP mode there. That remains 7.20 press update here again with the knob and begin the update process. Update OK, yes. And so now we're updating. And again, I'm going to edit this out to make this video shorter. So the update is now complete. It took about 90 seconds, under two minutes for all of that to occur. And so I'm going to press the knob again with the OK. With that, the radio turned off. And so at this point now, we're going to turn the radio on the normal way, just pushing the power on button. And we're going to have another step we need to take. So let's turn it on. So at this point, we need to go down to menu 127 and do a factory reset. And so we're going to do a long press here. And then we'll go down here to item 127. Factory reset, we'll press the knob. Are you sure? Yes, it is. we are. Rotate the knob to select OK and press factory reset. And it's resetting. It takes only a moment because that new firmware is already loaded and the radio turns off. Now this is why we made a save. Because when the radio turns back on, we're going to start at the very beginning as it was when it was a new radio. And so we're going to want that saved information. So we'll start by adding our call sign. Long press on function enters the call sign. And then now we're back to the reset. Okay, so... At this point, we're going to go back and get that information from our backup. So again, a long press. Bottom to get through the memories quicker. Read from the SD card. We want all. That's the one we had, so we're going to pick it. Again, all and OK. It's complete. And it restarted with my memories back in place. So that's the process of updating the firmware. With the firmware updated, 
Let's do a quick tour of the ADMS version 16 software. As we get started, it's important to note that with the firmware upgrade, you can transfer data back and forth between your computer and radio using the SD card. That means you can save a few bucks by not buying a programming cable. Of course, you can still use a cable if you prefer. So here's the display screen for the ADMS 16 software, and it's similar to other Yesu programming software. What I've done is I unzipped the folder that I downloaded. It had an executable for setup, so I ran the setup. I had it installed on my computer, and now it's just a matter of clicking a, a link on my computer desktop to open this when I need to use it. Now, to begin with, I'm just do a quick tour here. We've got File, Open, New, Close, and then these are some really interesting features of this software, and it allows you then to import from the FTM 100 to 400, export to it, import and export from the FT2D Handy Talkie, and import and export from the FT5D. So if you have one of these already, you can move that programming into the FTM 500 really pretty easily by using these import, and, and of course, vice versa. Uh, you can do some printing and then, of course, exit. In the editing, uh, you can cut, copy, and paste, which is not often found in these factory CPSs. You can do some searching. You can go to channels, you can delete channels and all that kind of fun stuff. In the communications, we can get data, we can send data. And then what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using the SD card to get our data uh, as opposed to a programming cable. We need to set our COM port as we do with most CPSs if we're using a cable so the software knows what COM port to talk to the radio on. In the settings, we've got our toolbar and status bar set, which is right here. And then we can also call up the settings display, which I'll do in a minute. We've got windows. We can tile or tile left or right, up and down, or cascade. And then we've got the version. So let's get started first by uh, importing the information from the radio. Now, I don't have a lot in it, but I have my settings set. I've got a couple of channels, so it'll give us an opportunity. So I've turned off the radio, I've taken the SD card out of the radio, put it in my computer. So at this point, I'm going to, to the communications tab and I'm going to go get the data from the SD card. And I want all of it because I want to see what the settings are as well. So I'll click all. It's going to take me down to the drive where I have that. All of this is in my FTM 500. It's in the backup folder. And so we're going to click on that file and click open. It's complete. Took just an instant because there's not much in it. And so here you can see I've got my channels in there. And then you can add channels easily just by typing into these various boxes and then putting in the appropriate information. Now along the top of this, there are also uh, a couple of tabs. So this is our primary memory uh, system. I don't have anything in there. Here's VO, VFOA, VFOB. That information is listed here. Home channel information is all set here. So we can make use of that, make changes as we might desire, and then home channel B. So all of that, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can read about it in the instruction guide. So those are the tabs for our channel information. Now let's go to settings. The settings information comes in and it has got just about all of the settings that are in the radio. So we can make these changes. And as with the previous display, we've got some tabs. So there's even more information that we can deal with. So we can do things like set the configuration for the day and time, whether we want a 12 or 24 hour clock, what our time zone is, APRS stuff. Uh, we can change things on our display in terms of the, uh, what we've got going, the compass, whether the heading's up or not. Each of these are drop downs. So heading up north or just heading up for the compass display. We can set scan information. All of that stuff that's described in the user manual for our radio is accessible here. And so it's sometimes easier to do that when you can see all the things that are related and make the changes using your mouse or your keyboard. And so here we go to the group mode and wires X. And so we can assign call signs 
and radio IDs for the group modes if we make use of that feature. In the APRS tab, we can set up our APRS information. We can set up some standard message ref, uh, replies here when we do that so we don't have to type the same thing every time. We can just go to a standard message. We can set our ambiguity. Ambiguity just means how close the APRS is going to put you to where you actually are. The speed and course gives us an opportunity to set when the APRS triggers, if it's following you in your car, if you've got the radio mounted in your car, all of those other things that are part of APRS that we're really not going to go to much detail here. We've got our choices, wide 1-1 one -one or wide 1-2, that gives the opportunity for how many times a, a digipeter is going to repeat uh, and so forth. So all that's in the APRS. And then here in the APRS beacon, we've got uh, some APRS filters, the lists, calls, smart beaconing, we can turn it on or off. All of that is APRS specific, which means this is a very complicated APRS beacon. It's not just getting reception from APRS, but it's actually providing you with a, a full APRS set of capabilities. Now the user manual for this software is about 35 pages long. And that's one of the benefits of Yesu products and, and other more expensive radios is that they're gonna give you comprehensive user manuals to help you figure out and make the best use of the software. And then now when we go into communications, we could send the data to the uh, SD card, just like here, like we did before by selecting all, it'll rewrite the data to the SD card. And then you can use that backup command like we just did on menu 107, as I recall, to reload this information into your radio. Now, since I didn't make any changes, I'm not going to do that, but this is how you would program via your SD card using the Yesu CPS, the ADMS-16. As I said earlier, not having a CPS was a drawback for the FTM-500. Upgrading the firmware to communicate with the CPS is a big win, in my opinion. As the Yesu National Sales Manager has said in a couple of interviews, you need to keep in mind that the ADMS program is designed to give you a way to set up your radio using the computer's keyboard instead of the radio's user interface. The ADMS program doesn't interact with outside resources like repeater book to import frequencies or to do some of the other things you might use Chirp to do. If that feature is important to you, the paid version from RT Systems might be worth looking at. Otherwise, if basic radio management and free are important to you, the Yesu CPS will likely meet your needs. I'll link some of the things mentioned here in the video description below. Join me over here for my earlier video updating the FTM 500 firmware. Thanks for watching and 73.